Two contentious debates are playing out in Washington this summer as the Senate voted today on competing Democratic and Republican tax cut proposals and the Congressional Budget Office delivered a new estimate on how Supreme Court action could affect the cost of the new health care plan. For more on each of those stories, I'm joined by Todd Swillick, a reporter for Public Radio International's The Takeaway on WNYC, and Julie Robner, who covers health care policy for NPR. Welcome to you both. Todd, there was a little bit of drama on the Senate floor today. What was the significance, if any, of this tax cut vote? Two tax cut votes. Two tax, cuts vote, ta tax cut votes, as you said, a Republican version and a Democratic one. In practical terms right now, in terms of people's taxes, your taxes and mine, not a lot of important implications because nobody's going to pass a bill that the president can sign in this election year. However, the election is really what this is about, and these votes are really what the election is about for the American people. And so the Democratic plan, which is essentially the president's plan to extend or to extend the tax cuts, I say it right, I always get it backwards, for people who earn $250,000 or more to end the tax cuts extension for them, Correct. that passed. It did pass. And what this really does, there's one important part of this to remember, and this is the, the fulcrum that probably Democrats want you to remember. Their bill extends tax cuts for all income up to $250,000. So even the 10 millionaires get their first, they get their tax cuts on the first 250 extended but 250000 and one dollars and up, the Bush tax cuts would expire and the rate would go back to 90, what is it, 90, uh, 39.6. But the Republican plan, which would have extended the, the tax cuts for everybody, including the people who earned the most, that failed. Was that significant in any way? That was a close vote. It, it was significant in a couple of ways. And the House Republicans who control the agenda on the other side will vote on this very same plan, extending all tax cuts for a year next week. It's, it's significant because really, like I said, this is what the election is about. It really is about Democrats and Republicans competing visions for how to reorder income distribution after the election. Mitt Romney is on board with the Republicans. He's on board with the Ryan budget, which is to extend all of the Bush tax cuts and deal with debt and deficit with cutting in other places. President Obama has said many, many times, not just recently, but really since 2010, when, by the way, he signed an extension of all these tax cuts himself, that he wants to get rid of the Bush tax cuts for anybody at 250 and above. And it was critical enough, at least in a political sense today, that they brought Vice President Biden into the chair in case they needed to break a tie. And that led to some funny moments during the debate, people referring to Joe Biden, the, the minority leader Mitch McConnell sort of alluding to the fact that it was good that the former senator wasn't able to speak because he might speak for a long time. <laughs> a bit of a <laughs> ha, chuckle. Ha, ha, yeah. I don't think anybody actually thought that a tie would come. They lost a couple of Democrats. The Democrats lost two of their numbers, mm -hmm. uh, Joe Lieberman, of Connecticut and Jim Webb, both retiring senators, Democrats of Virginia, they held everybody. Joe Lieberman, an independent who votes with the Democrats. That's right. right. You're, you're right. He's a Democrat. He votes with them. Uh, but interestingly, not for political considerations because they're both leaving. Neither of these gentlemen has to worry about reelection. Um, but, but Jim Webb, however, is, is still represents a, a state that is in a very tight race and where he has some, the Democrat he hopes to succeed him who probably wouldn't want that hanging around his tail. Jim Webb voted no on both of these proposals, the Republican and the Democratic proposal, because of a narrower provision, earned income tax credit, which is, is not extended in the, in the Republican provision. He really cares about that. It hits a lot of middle income people. I should say very quickly, this isn't just about marginal rates, your income taxes. There were a whole lot of other tax things that were mixed in here that will tease out as the election goes forward. Earned income tax credit, tax deductions for uh, for college tuition, estate tax if you're wealthy, all of those things are sort of in the mix now. Congressional Budget Office, Julie, bring you into this. They, they said yesterday that, in fact, the Affordable Care Act, because of the Supreme Court's action, will maybe not be as expensive as had been originally thought. That's right. And that was a little bit of a surprise. There were some people who thought that because of the changes that the court made, and the court only made one small change, it said that the expansion of the Medicaid program for people with low incomes would become optional for the states rather than mandatory. There, are, there were some people who thought that perhaps because of that, that the law might no longer even be paid for, that it might get more expensive because some of those people, instead of getting Medicaid, would go into these health insurance exchanges, these state-run exchanges, where they, where they would get federal subsidies. Those subsidies would be more expensive to the federal government than even the federal government paying the majority of those Medicaid costs. But what they didn't anticipate is that a lot of states would say, we don't want to, we're, we now have a chance to opt out of this. Well, that's expansion. right. Well, no, they, they, they did anticipate that, they, that the states could opt out of it. What they didn't anticipate was that the, the CB 
video would say a lot of those people will go into the exchanges and a lot of the but a lot of those people will a not be eligible to go into the exchanges because you have to have income up to a certain level to be eligible and a lot more people will simply end up without insurance they so, have to so what you're saying is that the, the money money is being saved but people will not be insured that's correct that was basically what the CBO said that the, that the, the law will cost less than they'd originally said back in March but there will be three million fewer people who will get coverage as a result of the law it seems like from the Democrats point of view the right thing happened for the wrong reasons which is the original plan was for everybody to be covered under this Affordable Care Act and now it sounds like because of the Supreme Court's action that is a dead letter uh, universal coverage well it was it was never going to be universal coverage remember there were going to be right. several million uh, people who uh, we had, we had uh, illegal immigrants who were not going to be covered um, now we're actually at the point where the CBO is estimating that 30 million people will gain coverage as a result of this law after 10 years and 30 million people will not be still will be covered still so it's, it's basically the same number of people will get covered who will remain uncovered um, it's half and half but if you imagine you know Todd was just saying how the the election is going to be very much about taxes and the economy. I think this election is also going to be very much about this health care law because if the Democrats or certainly uh, if President Obama is reelected and, and the Democrats retain at least one House of Congress, the law will almost certainly go forward. If the Republicans are elected, the, the law will almost certainly be repealed uh, and that, that de basically that these people who will not get coverage if the law is repealed and then you could end up with 60 million uninsured people. How many states years. do we know? What's the current count of how many states are opting out of this Medicare expense? Medicaid expansion. A lot of the governors, even we, we've had five or six governors who've said so far that they really won't do it, but we've also had some governors who've started to pull back on that. Pretty much, I think they're waiting until after the election to decide what they want to do. Um, it's a lot of money from the federal government. Um, every yeah. state eventually came into Medicaid. Every state came into the Children's Health Insurance Program. So we don't know yet. We really don't know yet. Todd, final question for you on what happened today on, on, on the Hill, which is the president came out with a statement later this afternoon saying that now the House, if they don't pass this bill that passed the Senate, they will be holding, uh, they will be holding people hostage, tax cuts hostage. Is, what is going to happen in the House? Well, next week the House will vote on a one-year extension of all the Bush tax cuts. They call them the existing tax rates, but what Democrats call the Bush tax cuts. Um, that will pass, and then you'll have the existing stalemate. You'll have the Democratic position, the President Obama position of extending them for the middle class versus the Republican position. One thing that's important that the Senate Democrats did manage to do today, and they, they gave voice to this, was separating, delinking the middle class tax cuts from those from the wealthy. The Senate now has the votes to say they don't all have to go together. You don't have to have tax extensions for the wealthy to get the middle class tax cuts. We've shown that we have the votes to separate them. And two, President Obama loves that. Two big issues, which are going to, as you point out, are going to play out throughout the entire election. Todd Zwillick, WNYC, Julie Robner of NPR. Thank you both very much. Pleasure. You're welcome.